Guy, you're listening to Jonesy's jukebox. It is ten minutes after twelve bells on a Monday. That was Mark the Hoople, all the young dudes, and before that was all the way from Memphis live. <clears throat> today is Ian Hunter's birthday. He's eighty today, man. Eighty, and he still. He still looks good, and he's still rocking and rolling. Hell yeah! He was on the, uh, he was on the, um, what's that bloody thing called? Rock and Roll Hall Hall of Fame. Fame. But with um, (laughs) with uh, he got up and played with Def Leppard. Did did all the young dudes? Still looks good, huh? He's he's in the he's in the Hall of Fame. I don't know if if he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ian Hunter. He just got up with a. Def Leppard, but he's still gigging. They were playing. They were meant to come here, but they stopped California. They just did like East Coast thing. That's that's old, isn't it? Eighty. He must have started young. Yeah. I'm I'm down with being eighty. Yeah. Getting there, sure. And still rocking and rolling. Hell yeah! What else are we gonna do? That would that would. Uh, I, well, I just want to be healthy when I'm eighty. Yes. I don't care what I'm doing. Yes. To be honest with you. <laughs> Gardening. Whatever. Yeah. Collecting stamps. <laughs> <laughs> Knitting, making uh, wicker baskets, anything. <laughs> Potholders. <laughs> Jonesy's potholders. That's it. Come and get them. <laughs> we're here with John Doe of the band X. And we're here with Tom De Savia. That's I knew I was going to. I was rehearsing that name for 10 minutes. <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up. The Savia. Not of the band X. Yeah, yeah. You're just uh, a, a, a writer. A writer. And that's what you've been doing for years? No. Uh, just thankfully, these last two books, when I started out many years ago, I worked for Cashbox. Oh, yeah. And then. Uh, that's defunct? Defunct, yeah. And uh, didn't really like writing about music too much. And then with the Johnny book, we got back into it. So yeah. This is, this is part two of two. This is the second uh, book about L.A. punk scene? Yes. Punk, punk rock related. Because yeah. at this point, it kind of diverges into hardcore and uh, what they called cow punk and, you know, funk and art bands and all kinds of stuff. Cause this is, the first one was 77 to 82, and yeah. this is 82 to 87. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good, though. I mean, we've got a lot of different authors and, you know, uh, Louis Perez from Los Lobos, and uh, you know Henry Rollins and Keith Morris representing the the uh, hardcore side. Talk to Angelo and, and Norwood from Fishbone, and as cool as we are, we're never going to be as cool as Norwood. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, it's just like he comes in, and it's like whoosh. the singer <laughs> from Fishbone. No, Angelo is the singer. Norwood's the bass player. Oh, I don't, I don't. And nor was, you know, like most bass players, he's a little more laid back. And, you know, Angelo's like 110% all the yeah. time. You know, he's awesome. So, yeah, yeah. More fun in the new world. Is That's what it's called? Out that's tomorrow. what it's called. I don't know how we get these titles. Just, no, you know. I don't know where you got that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Uh, is the Palomino in that mentioned in it? Oh, yeah. it is. It's got to oh, yeah. be, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lone yeah. Justice and, mm-hmm. and all yeah. those guys. Yeah. Sid Griffin. Yeah. I used to go down. I used to like that place down yeah, on Lan- Lancashire, place. corner of Lancashire, and it was uh, Palomino. Yeah, it was way yeah. down deep Lancashire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, it's now yes. a uh, like a quinceanera hall now. Yeah, and the structure's still there, but they they re uh, a place called the Valley Relics Museum relaunched it for a benefit not too long ago, and and had an event there, and it was a lot of the bones are still there. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, huh. is uh, Olympia in there? Oh yeah, Olympic ball, uh, the, Olympic, the cl- uh, yeah, the big the place. Olympic, mm-hmm. the, the Olympic, Olympic. yep. Oh yes, the yes. country club, all them places. There. Yeah, it's. Uh, I saw Peel there once. Yeah, we in, did too. In eighty something. Yeah, actually, Louis from Los Lobos talks about that. Yeah, because because Lobos opened that show. Oh yeah, and it was like a rain of beer cans <laughs> towards the stage from Peel fans. Just get off yeah go away oh Op- uh, no so, certain people you got to be careful who you open for because they <sighs> just don't want to know they just want to see who they came there to see yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> regrettable you would think that your 
you know, people would be open minded, but um, sometimes not. Um, the uh, Prince opening up for the Rolling Stones, I think, was the biggest disaster. They talk about throwing stuff at him. I think he only lasted two shows. And then they got a replacement and they got Iggy Pop to replace it. And he came out in like wearing a, a see through suit kind of thing. <laughs> and that went down great too. Lone Justice went right from the Palomino opening for U2, which did not go over well. That didn't <laughs> so, go over well no, too. No, then Bono started to come out and do and a tune with them. Yeah, and it, well, back in, but no, I think they were there to see U2. And, yeah. and they literally went from the Palomino to the arena stage. So. Yeah. Yikes. Maybe having an opening act ain't a good idea. We should oh, do something about of, that. Just you know, get someone with twirling plates or something. <laughs> <laughs> magicians. Yeah. The world needs more magicians. That's, that's a, well, there's plenty of them in Vegas. Do you think there's actually some magic in, in musicians or it's just smoke and mirrors? Because some people, when you watch them, it's like oh, yeah, incredible it's stuff. Like, totally how the magic. hell do you do that? Yeah, absolutely. We have magic every day in your freaking telephones yeah that's all magic it is i think so there's no wires anymore it's <laughs> like wireless how did, how did that happen <laughs> <laughs> yeah i said this doesn't work it's not going fast enough it's like as opposed to what as opposed to a covered wagon going across the country yeah <laughs> wells fargo yeah <laughs> uh, and and roads let alone yeah. technology what about roads <laughs> <laughs> when there was no roads. Go back to the basics. Yeah, the trail, the path. <laughs> Real punk rock. Did you know that, that that's why uh, Broadway in New York City has that bend to it? It, it, it bends like halfway yeah. through. Yeah, because that was a, an Indian trail. And they kept that, that. They said, okay, this goes right through the middle. We'll just make it Broadway. Wow. Yeah. Is that when they bought it for a dollar or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dollar eighty. Something silly, right? Yeah. Buck eighty, yeah, something. Yeah, because yeah, there's a deal. How can you own that? How can you own stuff? You can't own it. It's not yours to sell. I didn't realize that in uh, Indians were uh, east. I thought it was all like west and in mid middle of America. Yeah, everywhere. Tribes. Yeah, Mohicans. Yeah, they were the New York tribe. That was the last of them as well, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm wrong. You don't have the rim shut button. That's I'm so disappointed. We'll just come in and do that for yeah. you. <laughs> we do other things. So did you uh did you do is is it there's a there's a audio for both books or you did audio <laughs> mm -hmm. and you got whoever's uh, re, uh whose part is in it they're they're speaking. Yeah, everyone that wrote their own chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Did you you did an audio book for your book? Yeah. That's brutal, isn't it? Killed me. Yeah, it's hard. Sixty hours. So oh. Yeah, we got to split up the work. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. But I was determined to have my voice and not some professional guy. Oh, absolutely. Doing it with no personality. Yeah. But it is hard work. Do you think a lot of people? Can you tell how many people have downloaded as far as an audio goes? I never know. Uh, we, did, we did pretty well. On, we got a Grammy nom on the yeah. last one, uh, which we lost to Carol Burnett figures. She's been out to get us for years. Yeah, but, um, bloody cheek. Uh, <laughs> but um, but it did pretty well. But I think it's on on Audible and things like that. So I don't know if we ever we haven't been good to ask questions about numbers and things like so that. So you we can do better with that. You can buy it from a different audio you can get it from a different sources i know itunes mm -hmm. yeah audible is a big one what's that is that uh, what is it's that? like a subscription service where you spend x amount a month and you get all you can eat audiobooks but you don't keep it no you just no. listen to it it's like yeah it's like uh spotify for yeah. audiobooks i can't get my head around that concept of not owning something i like you to me both. buy something i know it's an old man's thing yes but the fact that you just stream something that's mm -hmm. there, but you don't own it, and you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm with you. But I think I heard that iTunes is, is going to be div no more. No more. It's going to be Apple Music. Yeah. So it, that's basically just streaming. Yeah, because I think, I mean. And that's what they've been doing, and it's obviously successful. Yeah. I'm not here to yeah rep them the, the way I understand it. No one's downloading anymore. It's taking up too much bandwidth, and so everyone's streaming, so they're getting rid of the 
purchase the tune. Yeah. And what? charging just a monthly subscription. So it's an, an it's more as you know, we're definitely deep into the all you can eat phase it's, of this it, life. It's a yo- it's a young person's thing just to stream everything, not own anything, not own cars, just get an Uber. Mm-hmm. It's that seems the way, and it's just old farts like us who are holding on <laughs> to purchasing I think, something. I think the Uber thing is great because they'd still be driving drunk like we did. So at least there's a lot less drunk driving. Yeah, I got a, I got a thing about Uber. I don't trust. I don't trust anyone driving an Uber. I don't know who they are. It's it's gotten a bit better. Although I, I had one ride, a, a, uh, I forget where it was, in the middle of the country, and this guy was so high. Yeah. <laughs> it was like his car reeked of marijuana. I don't it trust like, it. It was so high. And he goes, I'm, my app's not really working very good, man. And it's like, just get me to the hotel. Yeah. Please be quiet. And, and he's kind of doing a little weaving on the road. No, no, to... no, 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 no. <laughs> Although they're much better now, you know. I got it once. I, I got it a couple of times here, but one guy I got in, he had so much perfume on, I wanted to throw oh, up. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah, so, a lot of Axe yes. body spray. But young people like it. They don't care. I don't know yeah. that anybody likes that much perfume. How about scooters? What's your take oh, on scooters? I just want to run them off the bleeding <laughs> street. <laughs> but the birds, things, yeah. whatever, and all that, all that stuff, they just leave them lying around on the yeah. street. Well, someone pointed out that it's everything connected to scooters is exactly what your mom told you not to do. Like, keep your things nice, put them back where you found yeah. them, <laughs> You know, all the things you're supposed, your mom told you to do, it's like, no, you don't give a crap about what you do with it. You just leave it anywhere. Yeah. And, and if I was a store owner, yeah, I would say, get your crap off on the sidewalk of my store. <laughs> yeah. Get it away. Yeah. But my, my sweetheart uh, has a great idea, is that if you got some of those big, long zip ties that they use. Tie them all together. Yeah. Just like run them through the spokes of, of the wheels. And then you wouldn't actually be damaging them. But right. They would be t- completely inoperable. Yeah. And I love the the pictures that people post of them, like in garbage cans and like over the side of a bridge, and they're just down in the water. <laughs> is that a big company? But is, are they, I suppose one of them yeah, is, there's, is there's owned like by Ford. Yeah, one, one has been uh, bought by Ford Motor Company because Ford thinks so. Fine, it's transportation. Yeah. We're in transportation. Well, let's do this. I'm sure Amazon have got their f- fingers in yeah. there somewhere. Uber, yeah. Uber owns those new bikes. Have you seen those new bikes that are showing up everywhere? No. Those are Uber. They're basically like little scooters. Yeah. yeah. But they're, I mean, with uh, two wheels. So you're sitting <laughs> Tom down. Tom had a good one. He, he, he lives pretty close to the arc light down by uh, uh, over in the valley. And so it was a nice day. And so he walked to, to the movies. And then uh, after the it was like an, a mile and a half. And he's like, oh, I'll get some exercise, go to the movies and like eat a bunch of junk food. And then he got out of the movies. And goes, I don't want to walk home. So he got on one of those scooters for the first time. And he thought, if I was 20, and I was hammered. Yeah. I would totally get on. Perfect. <laughs> totally. And it's like nothing pisses off grown-ups more than those scooters. Nothing pisses off grown-ups more than grown-ups on scooters. Yeah. The looks I got yeah. were like, Ugh, Traitor. You. You Why traitor. Gotta, yeah, they got real mad. Uh, kind of taking the back streets. And the shocks aren't really good either. So they give you sort of a, I, 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 I. you kind of walk off yeah. with a little like a Bugs Bunny being hit in the back of the head with a bat. Yeah. Kind of. I'm, I'm thinking of getting an electric bicycle. Oh, those are rocking. Yeah, but yeah. one that I own. Yeah. I don't <laughs> leave, leave it. <laughs> you yeah. don't like to show no. your toys. I don't leave it outside your you store. Can, I don't think you can just rent those. I, no, I don't think <laughs> they're so. They're too dangerous. Yeah, but they, they're expensive too. Yes. You, you get a good one. Largo. <laughs> Is that company? Largo. What's that mean? <laughs> Is that code for something? That's, that's where we're playing. We're, we have a book event at Largo yeah. on Wednesday. Yeah. I knew that. Tom and oh, I just wanted to bring it up. Largo, Largo, in the Valley. Largo, Largo, Largo. No, La Siena again, Hollywood. Who are who are the guests, John? Tom uh Tom DeSavio is one of the guests. I'm one of the guests. And Charlotte Caffey from the Go Go's. And Tony Hawk. Oh, the, the skateboarder. The skateboarder, yeah. yes. Plez. He wrote a chapter in this uh, in this book. And Pleasant Gaiman. Gadabout. And Dana Town. Dana Gould. And Dana Gould, the comedian, is gonna be our moderator. Tomorrow, you're yeah. at the Grammy Museum. Yes. We are. Oops. What happened With to uh, Keith Morris and Alice Anders. And that's, yeah. that's sold out. Thank sold you. out. Sold right out. S O U L E D. We're sold out. Can you count how many birds will be outside? You, and, the scooters, you mean? Not, yeah, not real birds. Not real birds? Okay. <laughs> there could be birds well, on birds. I'll, I'll send you yeah. a text. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> Show me a picture. Yeah, birds on picture. birds. 
Let's play some music. Let's play some X. I must not think bad thoughts. We're here with John Doe and Tom. You can do it. Dasavia. Yes. Yes. Boom. Yes. <laughs> You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, KLOS. That was Los Lobos. A track called Viking. Gorgeous. And we had Ervil Peck, Dead of Night. He's got a good video, that guy. If you're um, interested, um, he wears a, a veil on a cowboy hat. And uh, good stuff. Then we had X. I must not think bad faults. And we're here with John Doe and Tom DeSavia. Yes. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it's the it. small victories. <laughs> I'm getting it. I'm not saying I ain't going to mess it up, but I'm, I'm getting it. Um, they got a new book, More Fun in the New World, The Unmaking and Legacy of L.A. Punk, out now in out. hardcover and audiobook. Out but, tomorrow. Out tomorrow. You're going to have to wait, folks, till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Get Evidently, out. Amazon Prime will have it at your door tomorrow morning. Now it's there. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's so insane. Because they've already read your phone and they've yeah. already sent it. <laughs> um... And this is the sequel to the Grammy-nominated bestseller Under the Big Black Sun, continuing the up-close and personal account of L.A. punk scene with 50 rare photos. Oh, there's photos in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's I'll look at it book. then. Yeah, we brought you one. <laughs> Thank God. And we share a publisher with yeah. you. Yeah, DeCapo. DeCapo, our friend DiCapo. Ben Schaefer. Yes, and also indeed. Chris Morse's book. Yeah. Or Keith Morse's book, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Can you sign it for me? Absolutely. Yeah? Look at you there. You look so young. <laughs> you look like a jock. Then you? you got that jock cut. Yeah, jarhead. You do yeah. have a jock cut, Jack. Yeah. You could. It almost looks like the same haircut as that bloke who does the voice. What's his name? The English bloke? Uh, he, he took that haircut from me. <laughs> you know what? It's in the book. <laughs> <It's> in, yeah. <laughs> What's his name? I have no Simon. Idea. I think I watched the... Simon Cow? Cow. Cow. No. Mine's longer and greasier. Yeah, because I don't see the sides. sides. Yeah. You've got the side Long bones. The sides. Yeah, it was pretty fun. You know, I mean, the, the, the whole thing of the legacy is, is what uh, kind of gives it more of a heart because it's, it's about, like, what happened in music from 82 to 87 inspired other people and is still inspired. You know, like punk rock, the whole concept of punk rock everyone oh punk's dead or whatever yeah. but no it's the free thinking somebody says no you can't do that and you say well yes we can and uh so we got allison anders to write a chapter the yeah. film director yeah yeah and we got tim robbins the actor to write a chapter yeah. because they took some of that ethos and said hey i'll apply it to acting i'll apply it to filmmaking or tony hawk i'll you know oh I'm, I could listen to the Circle Jerks skateboarding. That's way more fun. Yeah. Than listening to Foreigner. Yeah. It doesn't fit. Yeah. And uh, it was yeah. cold as ice, baby. Yeah. The power <laughs> ballads really weren't. Good uh, so is that what is that? What would you say? I mean, even even is it still was not mainstream, right? It was underground. Yeah. The stuff you're talking about. S well. I mean, during this period, that's what... Like, as far as radio play, you didn't really hear it on the radio, right? And that's well, that's what people would college. like to think that they got played on the radio, but it didn't. No. Well, the so Go-Go's The Go-Go's did. Go-Go's did. And, which and there the were book. a few breakthrough, you know, bands, you know, Los Lobos, Will the World mm. Wolf Survive, that, that that got out, you know? And yeah. I think even Waylon Jennings did a cover of that. Yeah. So. And Everly Brothers covered uh, the rank and file tune. Yeah. So a little bit. This is that's that's kind of the unmaking part of it. It just it didn't accept it radio. It, no. it was not interested in no. in any kind of punk music. But it started to seep in through weird. But didn't Dylan take the plugs out? What well, right? Was Crusados. Crusados out. Right. Yeah. Had had them backing him up. Yeah. It, uh, you know, it's it's weird. It's like it it uh, it's it seeped through, and and you know, thank God for Foreigner and Boston. And Peter Frampton, and uh, Tom's love, Linda Ronstadt, because they gave us a reason to make punk rock music. Yeah. So we owe them a great debt. Yeah, <laughs> I, I actually like 
jo j journey in Boston. Yeah. Well, I won't think less of you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Peter I, Case had a pretty good hit with uh, with Plimsolls too. Yeah, a million, a million, million miles, miles away. away. That was that was big here. Yeah, 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 miles away. Yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You know, <sighs> you, you, did I stunt you then when I said that you've gone quiet? No, no, I'm just uh, thinking, thinking of other hits. Thinking of other hits, <laughs> but you know, the the legacy part is is good because we inspired people. Yeah, you know, you guys did all the the you know the uh, a lot of. English bands inspired L.A. bands, and then it went on from there. You know, the, people may not know Lone Justice, but they probably know Nico Case. They may not have a, you know, flipper on their playlist, yeah. but they probably have Green Day. You know, yeah. if it wasn't for Flipper and Circle Jerks and these weird-ass bands, uh, Billy Joe wouldn't have said, well, I can do that. Yeah, They don't play that good. Well, it's the, sa it's the same as any sports guys from the 70s who were, uh, like, what's it, you know, Joe Namath. Yeah. Or whatever, whoever. Yeah. When you look at how much dough they were getting to compare to what guys now get. Oh, God. You know, it's that, would you, do you have a resentment from no. all these other bands that have made dough off something that you kind of started? You know what? Part of what you started. Uh, I actually talk about that. And, you know, Blondie and Joan Chet can play any casino anywhere in the U.S. Yeah. And maybe that's a double-edged sword because we're still a little bit weird. I'd like to have a fat bank account, but whatever. And we're still legit, you know. X is out there playing in a rock and roll club, holds 500 people. Yeah. And, and we can do that. We can... Blow what, the roof off of that. What if the Rolling Stones said to you, we want you to open up for us? I'd say, sure. I'd say, where do you want it? It's all time and money, Jonesy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have the money and do we have the time? And 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 you could have in the contract, I, I'm not going to do it if anyone throws stuff at us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how good their arms are anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've said a few times, you, you kids, be careful down there in the mosh pit. You might break a hip. It's amazing, isn't it? Some of them kids. <laughs> it's getting younger no, and I'm younger talking about in there, the, I'm talking about the oldsters. No, I know. They, yeah. they can't do it. They'll yeah. go round and round in wheelchairs now, <laughs> like Ben-Hur. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, there's a, there, I, I think uh, if there wasn't the young people that come to see X, I don't think we'd be as enthusiastic to do it. And, and to see some 16, 18-year-old looking up at XC and going like, God, she's killing it. Yeah. She's feral. And, yeah. I, and and I, I think, yeah, you're right. <laughs> she is, and and they're inspired, and it's like, cool. Yeah, we're like the blues players of of nowadays, yeah, you know, of the old days. And there's a great East LA scene going on right now. New Yorker of all places ran something a couple of months ago. On what, this, what scene. bands you talking just about? Just a ton of bands that are playing, like a lot of them, uh, just in the East LA scene. Hispanic kids, Starcrawler. Proper, well, Starcrawl is a fantastic band. Skating Polly is another one that we just love. But specifically in East L.A., there's this really vital scene that I was kind of... They're doing it right if it took... We didn't hear about it. Yeah. We didn't know about it until after it happens. That's what's supposed to happen, right? Yeah. But they seem to have you know, followed the treasure map from all these records, and they know their Black Flag, and they know their Dead Kennedys. And they punk, know their, punk, you mean like hardcore punk? Yeah. Yeah, and then, but there's, there's, I, I went through listening, there's some bands that sound like X, there's bands that sound like the Dills, or bands that sound like, you know, it always happens. Like we, you know, I heard a lot more bands that sounded like the MC5 before I heard the MC5, yeah. and then went, oh, that's it. Yeah. That's where they got it. So, what did you think, then, of the Go-Go's when they kind of, they actually did become mainstream, you know. They, thank God for MTV, right? Yeah, uh, they might have even predated MTV. It, we thought, I can't believe it took them this long, because yeah. they couldn't get signed. It took Miles Copeland and IRS to sign them finally. Did they write their hits? Oh yeah, oh, we yes. got the beat. They wrote everything. Oh yeah. yeah, Charlotte wrote. We got the beat. The Jane only Co wrote. Uh, Our lips are sealed. Yeah, the only all girl. They wrote everything. I mean, here's this. Here is a band. I mean, think about it. You got a band of like early to mid twenty year olds, and they're all girls. They're playing their own inst instruments. They're writing their own songs, and they can't get signed. Yeah, it's like, are you out of your? Because no, because we want to have our classic rock. 
do not mess with the classic rock. This is the gravy train. We don't 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 you tell us what. And so when they, <clears throat> I mean, we went to see him at the Hollywood Bowl and like. Bob Welsh, the baseball player, and Mike Marshall from the Dodgers, they were there. We're going like, this is awesome. Yeah. Look at our friends. They made it, you know. Of course, they had had to pay a debt <laughs> with their partying and so forth. What you mean, with a, a label, a manager? No, oh. just their excess. Oh, yeah, they partying. Partied hard. Yeah. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> Let's play the Go-Go's. We got the beat. We're here with John Doe, the band X, and Tom Isavia. Yes. Take it away. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. It's 12.53. That was Starcrawler, young band. I love LA. Then we had the Go-Go's. We got the meat. <laughs> beat, sorry. Beat. We're, we're here with uh, John Doe. Neat, neat, neat. And Tom DeSavia. It's just so easy now. It rolls off your tongue. So easy. That, that's the last time I'm going to say it, too. You never know. Well, that's, that kind of makes me sad. Well, you guys, you're going <laughs> to be back here. Oh, you might come back, yeah. Uh -huh. But right now, I think yeah, you're going to leave. And uh, let's give you a plug. So Tuesday at the Grammy Museum at 7 p.m., John Doe, John DeSavia, Keith Morris, and Alison Anders. But that's sold out. That's sold out. out. You like that, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> but Wednesday, you're at Largo, the place on that's in again next to uh, the, the lingerie shop. Yes, next to the Roger room and the, the bar and the lingerie. Yeah, the mannequin lingerie display. What's that called, that place? Trashy, Trashy, Trashy lingerie. lingerie. There you go. See, so shoveling it straight <laughs> <away>. <laughs> No yeah. hesitation. Trashy lingerie. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's, and you, you're with the two of you. And uh, Pleasant Gaiman. Yeah, who's he? Pleasant Gaiman is a, a lady, and uh, she is uh, a writer, and she's a belly dancer, and she's been out on the scene since the very get-go. I'm flipping through the book here for... She's in both books, uh, too. Yeah, she she's in, in both book. books. She's okay. a, she character. is an incredible character. Charlotte Caffey. Yep. Who uh, just You just made her a couple of pennies yeah. playing her song. And Tony Holt. This is all Wednesday at Largo. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, and Wednesday. Dana Wednesday. Gould, the comedian, is going to moderate for us. I like that place, Largo. Yeah, yeah it's nice. Very good. So, Johnny, baby. Jonesy, my friend. Thanks for coming in. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get to uh, write another classic like Ang Angry Guys in the Wind. Remember that one? <laughs> I do. <laughs> We're just angry old white men. Remember? <laughs> just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, well, call me up. Yeah. Come out to Austin. We'll we'll write some country hits. Yeah, baby. Yeah, man. Thanks um, for coming by. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having us. We're yeah. going to visit the Duke when we come back. We're going to play some more rock and roll. Well, shout out to Skating Polly if they're listening. Our favorite band. Yeah. Got any other favorite bands you want to give a shout out to? Ooh, okay. like, uh, like today. Uh, Richard Edwards, Jenny O, and my pal in the old 97s. And I'm going to forget people and insult them. But It's like you're taking your Grammy already. Yeah. The Beatles? I'd like to think John's I'd grandmother. I'd like to think the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I'd like to think John's grandmother. I'd like to thank the gardener's son. <laughs> <laughs> Who said I want to thank myself? First, I want to thank myself. <laughs> Oh, uh, was it? <laughs> Didi Ramon. Okay. You got to do game shows. Here's dude. for all You're of good. our. <laughs> here's all of our fallen. I'll, I want to thank all of our fallen soldiers, all of our heroes who have passed on to the other side. All right. Yeah. Go. We'll see you later. All right. Thank you. <laughs>